I love cybersecurity. Love it. I, I recommend it to anyone who enjoys problem solving, who enjoys critical thinking, who enjoys like fast paced dynamic. This is a beautiful part of cybersecurity. A vulnerability is found, it's patched. A vulnerability is found, it's patched. Hey guys, today we're finally doing the video of how to start a career in cybersecurity. I get asked this probably more often than any other question. And so I know a lot of you all wanna know where to start. We're gonna cover it today. It's gonna be fun. Okay, we're gonna start this YouTube channel with a tradition, and that tradition is we're drinking tequila. So, cheers, babies. All right, step one, figure out what you wanna do. Step two, start setting up a lab, start playing with some of these different technologies, and start just getting your hands dirty. Step three, start building your network. So, like many fields, like technology, um, cybersecurity is a very, very, very broad space, all right? So when you are saying you want a career in cybersecurity, you can take a cybersecurity role on the business side of the house, maybe talking about cyber risk and coming up with business strategies to help mitigate that risk. But you can also take a very technical role. Maybe you wanna be a um, network engineer or you want to be a penetration tester and, and do ethical hacking or maybe you want to work in digital forensics and incident response. Cybersecurity is such a broad, broad field. So I would challenge you to start looking up um, some of these different roles and kind of see what interests you. Now we'll probably cover those at a later time, but for all intents and purposes, we're going to talk about getting into a technical role in cybersecurity, which is my background. And so how do you start a career in cybersecurity where you are hands-on keyboard, either in an incident response um, and digital forensics type role or in a, a red teaming ethical hacking type role, penetration testing. So now that we have cleared the air, we're going for a technical role. Where do you start? I think it's super, super critical that folks have a very, very solid foundational understanding of networks and operating systems. So when you are for example on the red team side if you're not familiar with the word red team um, basically red team means you're the adversary so you get paid to breach companies to you get paid to hack these companies so that you can tell them where their risks are what the vulns are and they can remediate them and fix everything before they actually get breached okay so when you want to start in that role or even if you want to do it on the blue team side which is the defense okay so you have offense and defense red team is offense attacking blue team is defense defending okay so your blue team is going to be your incident response your security operation center so you'll hear roles like a SOC analyst SOC analyst you're basically um, receiving alerts and responding to them you're either you're triaging so hey this is probably a false positive you know maybe some user downloaded something but antivirus picked it up or um, hey it looks like we have an actual adversary based on what our alerting capability looks like it looks like there's something that we need to, to investigate a little further so if you want to get into either of those roles you're really depending on a foundational understanding of how computers work okay if you're hacking a computer you're basically telling the computer to do things it was not intended to do so hacking um, is manipulating the machine to act in a way that it wasn't intended to so most of the time if you want to start in this ethical hacking space you really want to have a super foundational understanding of the windows operating system and i say that because most enterprises are run, running the windows operating system you want to really understand how windows works what does um what has microsoft done to secure windows what are some of the risks that they've assumed right and once you understand that as a hacker you can manipulate them as a blue teamer, incident responder, SOC analyst, you can anticipate those and start protecting against that. Or if God forbid there's a breach or some type of threat that's actively in the environment, you know where to look for these artifacts. So when you start understanding, when you start trying to understand Windows, um, I recommend really understanding like what's the Windows registry. I'm not gonna go into super detail about any of these concepts just yet because that will take girl boy whoever is watching that's gonna take a long time 
So just make a note of these. Look into the Windows registry. Look into common Windows processes. Um, you know, what does startup look like for Windows? Look at common network ports for Windows. So um, basically what ports are typically open on a computer and what is used in a enterprise environment. Now, once you understand that computer itself, you understand that local Windows machine, most of the times in organizations, you are also going to be attacking the enterprise as a whole. So if you're attacking the enterprise, you need to understand how that enterprise is run. And a lot of organizations are running Microsoft's Active Directory. Active Directory, think of it like a user and computer and group management tool. So what happens is as an attacker, you're going after accounts that are part of this what's called a domain. Think of a domain like a kingdom, okay? So you're going after accounts that are part of this kingdom and your end goal is to get someone in the royal family, okay? So we'll say that your they're called domain admins. Those are like the gods of the network. They have rights to everything. If you get that password, then you can access um, the database of all the passwords in the company. These are like large scale breaches. This is this is like what you want to be doing. So basically, again, you start with the computer, like I said, registry, basic system processes and ports, what's common on, um, on Windows. When you start looking at ports, you're going to obviously need to know what protocols are associated with those. And then after you understand the single machine, you also are going to want to know how that integrates with the environment. So how is it managed by Active Directory? What kinds of things are, are existing there? I would definitely focus on knowing the single machine first. And if you're looking for tips um, like on Google, start looking up Windows Digital Forensics or Windows Incident Response. There are a lot of classes that exist to help you get familiar with Windows. Now, how to get familiar is another piece of my advice. Read all you want. Maybe if you want to read Microsoft's documentation and every single thing that they've ever written in the history of their existence, baby, you do that. But you're not going to learn as much as if you just build a VM or you have a Microsoft computer, a Windows computer, and you're actually playing with it. So if you don't know what a VM is, it's a virtual machine, which is a machine that lives inside your machine. So if I have a Mac, I can actually run a Windows computer on my Mac through a virtual machine. That way you have a Windows computer that you can actually play with. And um, you can see what processes are running, you can um, see what ports are running, and, and it's it's gonna make it a whole lot easier for you to actually um, do things. Now, once you've passed the level of really understanding that single system, I really, 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 really recommend that you create a lab, okay? You don't even have to spend a lot of money. Most computers, um, unless you're running like um, something with, you know, a really old processor and not a lot of RAM, then um, you're gonna probably be able to run at least a couple VMs on your computer. And so what you want to do eventually is set up a lab environment where you set up one Windows computer that's going to act as the domain controller. Um, basically, I told you Active Directory is like a kingdom. Think of the domain controller as the cast. That's also where everyone's user accounts and names and passwords exist. So set up a lab with at least a domain controller and at least one machine that's joined to the domain. And then you can start to understand what is happening in a corporate environment over the network that can be manipulated. Now this helps you on both digital forensics incident response, I guess that's the side, on your, your blue team side, but also helps your red team side. So whatever side you wanna be on, you need a fundamental understanding of how a computer works and what computer management looks like in an enterprise. Um, the last thing that I would tell you to get into cybersecurity is start building your network. Cybersecurity is very, very small. And so there's a lot of ways you can build your network. I know a lot of um, cybersecurity folks are really active on Twitter. Feedly. Feedly is for RSS feeds. You can subscribe to different RSS feeds. That's how I get my daily dose of cybersecurity news. So create a Feedly. Um, start reading up on those articles. Start following the authors. A lot of times those authors are also speaking at conferences. That's another thing. There, we're in quarantine, y'all. There are a lot of digital conferences. If you want to know them, please find like my website, join my Slack space. I'm going to put it here in the description box. 
because I want to be a resource to y'all and there are so many like virtual conferences that are going on right now so you can get exposure you can listen to people's technical presentations who knows maybe a year from now you're presenting something on your own research start playing if you haven't been on github a lot of people post their tools on github start playing with some of their tools now read the code first because you could be downloading some malicious shit but and start seeing who those authors are and you can follow them on twitter follow them whatever it is follow their blog whatever it is there is a lot of knowledge in this space and you really want to immerse yourself in it and hug everything cybersecurity because this is going to be one of the most rewarding experiences of your life. I love cybersecurity. Love it. I, I recommend it to anyone who enjoys problem solving, who enjoys critical thinking, who enjoys like fast paced dynamic. This is a beautiful part of cybersecurity. A vulnerability is found, it's patched. A vulnerability is found, is patched. So when you are in cyber, you're keeping up with all of that. So if you like learning, I promise you, you will enjoy this because you're, you're project based a lot of the time, like especially if you're on a red team, projects are four weeks long. And then you go to a whole new environment, you go to a whole new company, and you have to start from zero and try to get whatever trophies it is that they've assigned. So such a rewarding career, definitely requires work, but it's worth it. It's so, 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 so worth it. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed the first video of this series. Um, eventually, what you're gonna be able to expect from this channel is more content. Uh, we're gonna get into some technical concepts, so think of it like little mini lecture series. So we're gonna start talking about the Windows registry like I mentioned. Maybe we're gonna talk about common ports on Windows, how to set up a lab environment. All of that is coming, I promise you all, it's coming. Um, and post-corona, it's gonna still be there. So we're in this together. If you ever need to reach out to me, please, please, please join Slack because I'm active on Slack and it's so much easier than replying to a DM. And apart from that, in the Slack space, there are other people in cyber that want to do what you're trying to do. So you guys can connect and be friends and it's great. We're a big happy family. So join Slack. I'm so excited that you guys are here and I can't wait to see where this adventure takes us.